Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So today's video is going to be telling you guys how to edit like Peter McKinnon. So this is Peter McKinnon's Instagram page here. Go ahead, give him a follow, uh, check out some of his photos. And the idea is, is we're going to be taking a very similar photo to kind of like the style, the snow style. We've had a lot of snow quite recently in England, so we've got some snow photos. And the idea is, is we're going to try and teach you guys how to get a similar style, I guess, kind of like these snow ones, um, similar to this zoomed in one down here as well. Very similar to this kind of photo here. So we're going to be using this one as our reference as we're working through. And the idea is, is we're going to try and get our photo to look as similar as this photo. Now, before I start, there will be a preset pack available for Peter McKinnon's kind of style. Obviously, his style does change depending on his location. So we're just going to be focusing on the very basics of his style. Um, but the preset pack will be available. The pack will be probably for about £15, but again, the information will be down below in the description. And if you guys are interested in purchasing this, contact the two of us on our Instagram pages. You can send me a direct message on my Instagram page, that's Matthew underscore GKB. It's my account, and of course, go ahead, give me a follow as well if you like my stuff. You can also contact my brother, and this is his Instagram page here as well. So as you can see, he's also got a very kind of similar style photo. Um, so. If you're interested in that pack, just go ahead and send us a message over there and we will hook you up with the pack. Um, and I said it's going to be about six presets, maybe eight presets for about 12 to 15 pounds. Okay, so we're going to look at some of his photos now and we're just going to get a rough idea of what he puts in his photos. So as you can see, he has lots of contrast, lots of clarity, really bright patches, dark patches, um, very kind of desaturated, but um, no fade, anything like that, uh, no grain, very desaturated kind of photos. Uh, if we find this one that we can use as our reference here, you see quite blue in the background, very cold kind of feel. Obviously, that is because it's very snowy as well. We've also got some snow going around in the front here, which we are um, going to have in our photo anyway because it was taken when it was snowing, so you don't have to do that in Photoshop. Those are the photos. These are the, this is our reference, and but without any further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so here is the photo that we are going to be editing. So this is the final color grade. This is what we're going to be hoping to get at the end of this video, and this is the before photo. So as you can see, this before and after after that's hopefully what we're going to be trying to do and as you can see that has got a very similar kind of color grade to Peter McKinnon's so as you can see very similar to his style going on here okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to crop this down to the size that is suitable for Instagram so the closest we can get for that is going to be a 4 by 3 aspect ratio so just come down and select that and then this is a pretty good crop as it is at the moment so I'm just gonna leave that we kind of want my face as central as possible select done and as you can see we've now got a better kind of crop okay so the first thing we can do is when we looked at his photo so for example this one here we have quite a blue kind of feel to it um, the temperature is quite cold and we're focusing on the high contrast bright highlights and very dark shadows so we're going to do that by focusing on our temperature um, dial here so we can bring that down to about 4000 850 I think should be a pretty good value okay so now we've brought it down a little bit what we're also going to do is we're going to change the tint um, as well we don't want any kind of greens but it looks a little bit kind of green in the hood here and we've also got some greens we don't want it to look too green a bit murky so we're just going to bring that up probably to about minus one nothing too drastic very very subtle now all his photos are very bright and um, there's not really many dark patches so what we are going to do is we are going to bring up the exposure a little bit to about 0.3 I think and again, the contrast, we're also going to bring up to probably about 30, 35. As you can see, already looking a little bit better, we've got more contrast, a bright image. We're also going to do the same, we're going to bring up the highlights just to make the background really kind of crisp white. We're going to bring it up again to probably about 30, 35. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to bring up the shadows a little bit just towards uh, the right, just to bring in a little bit more detail into the shadows. And then we're going to counteract this by bringing down the blacks to kind of make the blacks quite rich. So it brings up probably to about plus 18. Then we're going to take the whites down a little bit. This is just so we don't blow out the whites and everything look too white and too bright. So probably to about minus 20, minus 30. Something like that is pretty good. And as well, the same for the blacks. We can bring those down probably to about minus 30 as well. So as you can see, we've got a very contrasty, rich kind of image at the moment. So if I do the before and the after, as you can see, already we're looking a little bit more towards Peter McKinnon's kind of style. Next up, we're going to come down to our clarity, vibrance and saturation panel. Now, in lots of Peter's photos, you can see, especially in his arms here, there's lots of clarity going on. Uh, see if I can find another one as well. The one up at the top was a very good example. This one here, we've got loads of clarity going down here in the rock. And we've also got this one, lots of clarity in the hair and in the trousers as well down here, you can see. So we're going to bump up the clarity on our image as well. And again, as I said, the vibrance or the saturation is quite low, so we are going to bring that down as well. So I'm going to go a little bit crazy. I'm going to bring the clarity really quite far up, probably to about plus 50 and then the saturation down a little bit, it's probably about minus 20, minus 30. About minus 22 should do it quite well. So as you can see, if I do the before and after, already we're really getting towards his kind of style. And already all we've done is really focus on our very simple panel up at the top here. 
Now coming down to the tone curve, we can do a little bit on the tone curve, but um, I'll show you guys what you can do. But for this image, it's kind of exposed pretty well and we've kind of got the feel we want. But um, I will show you guys what you can do if you have a photo that's not exactly like my one. Okay, so what we're going to do on the tone curve, we're not going to do our usual S-shaped curve of introducing a fade into our shadows uh, like that kind of feel because as you can see on his, he doesn't have any fade at all really in his images. So we're not going to be doing that. We are going to be focusing on putting in some really kind of dark patches. So we are going to bring it in the opposite direction to the right a little bit. Um, we're obviously too far and then it's going to go too dark, but a little bit to the right if you wanted to do anything as well. Then you can go and play around with the other parts as well. So you can bring up the shadows again a little bit. And then the mid-tones, if you wanted any brighter, you can bring it up um, or darker again, bring it down. But that's not really playing much difference. I think probably leave it where it is is good. Um, the mid-tone highlight kind of area, again, that's kind of the sky. That's not really going to do much. We don't want to blow out to the top there. So maybe a little bit up. And then the highlights as well is going to be the same kind of thing. We don't really want to do anything with that as well. So as I said, the tone curve, um, we're not really going to be doing too much for that um, on this kind of image because most of that was done with the whites, shadows, and darks down here. Next up, we've got the hue, saturation, and luminance panel. Now. For this particular image, we have lots of kind of monotone kind of colors, blacks, grays, whites, and we've only got a little strip of blue going through the middle here and some greeny blues in my eyes. So mainly the hue saturation panel is not going to do much for our image. So you guys could probably want to go ahead and play around with it. So I will show you examples because we can't really give you an example of that on our um, photo that we've got here. But if you look at lots of his photos, they are kind of a very simple kind of color palette. So if you look in this one, for example, he has pinks, blues and whites are his main kind of colors with some specks of teal. Um, nothing drastic like bright oranges, bright yellows and stuff. Um, again, if we come down here, very minimal red, blue and black. And of course, you've got your whites and grays. Then again, if we come down to his Iceland photos, a very desaturated look. Again, we've only got the kind of the browns, whites and blacks. And then he usually has a kind of a color that he makes pop in the image. And we are going to try and replicate that kind of getting a certain part of the image to kind of really pop out and stand out because that really does add to his style. You can usually find something like that in all of his photos. For example, this one as well, his blue jacket. Again, this one, his red jacket really stands out against the background and everything. And as again, as this is our reference photo in the eyes here, his sunglasses really stand out. So my advice would be to choose a very minimal color palette, make everything quite desaturated. And the blue is kind of more of a gray kind of blue color, not really going towards the teals. So coming back into our Lightroom, you can see if I adjust the, the reds, we can bring it to the left to make my face a little bit more pink. Uh, the oranges, again, that's only going to affect the skin tone. We can leave it as that is because you don't want to make the skin tone look too drastic. Yellows, again, in our image, aren't going to do anything. Greens won't do anything. Aquas won't do anything. Blues will probably do something. You can see we can go to teal or we can go to purple. Now, as I said earlier, he doesn't have any real teal colors in his image, apart from maybe one or two kind of spots. So we are going to leave the blues as they are, and everything else will probably be the same. So that is all we're going to do in the hue kind of section. Now, the saturation, we are going to bring down the blues a little bit. Um, that is because we do want to make a very kind of desaturated kind of feel to the image. So we're going to do that by coming down to the blues, probably bring them down to about minus 20, minus 25 um, should be a kind of a good value, not too much that it goes obviously black and white because as you can see, pretty much all of our image is in the blue kind of palette of this photo. Um, so you can adjust yours accordingly, but mainly focus on keeping everything desaturated apart from one particular color that I would suggest maybe just keep really saturated. So if you have a really bright red coat, make sure that really pops out and stands out in the image. Coming down to luminance, we're going to leave those exactly as they are. This is a very basic kind of color grade because it's all very desaturated and high contrast and clarity. This part that's going to change the image quite a lot is going to be the split toning. This is where we're going to be doing most of our kind of color editing. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to bring up the saturation probably to about 5 to 10, something like that, uh, for both the shadows and the highlights. That's just so we can see really where we're working. So with the highlights, we're going to bring those probably towards the blue side, probably for both of them as well, we're going to bring it towards the blue side. So I'm thinking about 210, 215, something like that is pretty good. Now what you can also do is press Alt or Option, and then as you scrub over, it will show you the exact color you're on. Um, so I'm going to leave that probably about there. Bring down the saturation for this for the highlights very low, probably to about 4, maybe 5. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a similar thing on the shadows. Shadows, we can do the same again. We're going to click Alt or Option and drag across. I'm thinking about 180, 190 should be pretty good one. So this is kind of a light kind of icy blue. Um, we're going to bring that saturation up a little bit to probably about plus six as well. So there you can see the before and the after it does make quite a bit of difference so far. Even though it's a very basic color grade, it really adds to the image. Sharpening, I'm going to leave it about 25. We're not going to do anything with the noise reduction and we're not going to do anything down here in the camera calibration. So that is the basics of this image done already. 
Okay, so now we've done that, what I am going to be focusing on is using both our radial filter and, of course, our brush, um, our, our adjustment brush as well. So we're going to be using that to kind of accentuate the highlights and the shadows for the brush. And then we're also going to make sure we find a point, remember I said, pick a point that really pops out to us. And we're going to do that, we're going to use my eyes for this particular image. Now, we've got to be careful that we don't really overdo it because it's very easy to make the eyes really bright and vivid. We can do a very basic one with this, you can do uh, lots more, but we are just going to really get our radial filter drag it into a circle over our eyes, so probably about that big. Come down, make sure we've inverted our mask. Um, obviously this is the wrong colour at the moment, I'm just going to get it to the right size and position it to the right place. Something like that looks pretty decent. Drag that over my iris. And then what we're going to do is we're not going to put the exposure down really low, because that makes it look like some kind of demon. We're going to leave that um, and we're going to bring it up to the right a little bit. Nothing too much, probably about 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Um, something like that is pretty good and we're also going to bring down our temperature so we can make my eyes a little bit bluer and stand out a little bit more. Now we're going to do the same again, we're going to get another one and we're going to do exactly the same kind of technique but again just drag it over the other iris, position it, come down, invert the mask, put that up to about probably a little bit higher because this side was in a little bit more shadow. I'm thinking probably about 0.7 0.8 would be a good kind of value. I think we're going to increase the the brightness on my right eye as well. We're going to bring that up a little bit more. And again, we're going to go into this one and we're going to change the temperature down towards the blues a little bit. We're also going to bring up the highlights and the shadows just a little bit, obviously not to 100, um, just to kind of make these little highlight bits here pop out and make sure the whole image looks a little bit better. Again, bring up the highlights, bring up the shadows a little bit. Oh, that's a little bit too much. Probably it's about only probably about plus five, plus ten on that eye. But actually, that looks a little bit too much. I think I might just leave those shadows where they were. Okay, so that is slightly better. As you can see, we already have the eyes kind of really popping out of the image, glaring at us, making it look a little bit more interesting. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our brush tool, and we're going to focus on making the highlights on our shoulders and the shadow down here a little bit more um, drastic. Uh, it looks a little bit more contrasty. So, bring the saturation, the sorry, the exposure down to about minus zero point. 9.7 I've got here, minus 1, and then we're just going to brush over this kind of dark kind of section down here. Make sure it's obviously not too dark that we lose all of our detail, but make sure it is kind of a decent depth of um, darkness down there. We're also going to try and make the inside of the hood a little bit darker, just kind of make it look a little bit more like my face is kind of disappearing inside the hood. I'm just going to kind of brush over my cheekbones a little bit here, just kind of blend me into the shadows. We will do a little bit more on my face with a brush in a second. Uh, so we're going to bring that back, we're going to fit that to the sides, and we're going to create a new brush. This one's going to be for our highlights. Probably bring it up, you can always change the exposure afterwards, but I like to bring it up quite high just so I can kind of see where I'm brushing and see what I'm doing. Again, see where the light falls, it falls on our shoulder here, so, or I should say my shoulder. Bring it up a little bit, again, we can do it on the hood as well. And of course, wherever we see the light kind of catching a little bit more uh, just kind of brush over those areas and again I kind of want this drawstring to kind of stand out against the background a little bit more so just going to really lightly and carefully brush over the drawstring it won't make much difference but it should be enough to kind of highlight those little bits of snow just kind of make it stand out a little bit more okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new brush again this is going to be a highlights but we're going to focus on the fluffy bit of my hood here now as you can see we have a highlight here and a highlight here and it's dark in the middle so we're going to kind of accentuate that by brushing the highlights in the top and again at the bottom down here with the big chunks of snow that we've got caught on the hood which is quite a cool effective look and um, again around the top here make sure those bits are bright and then we're going to come and we're going to create a new brush again bring down our exposure to probably about minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.6 and just brush in this darker kind of region here just to kind of make that contrasty feel in the hood and add a little bit more dynamic to the image, make it a little bit more interesting to look at. Using the brush is a really good way of kind of bringing the uh, viewer's attention to a certain part of the image. So for example now as well I'm going to focus on the eyebrows. We're going to make those a little bit darker because I haven't got very dark eyebrows and just make just make everything a little bit contrasty the idea is and this is kind of like selective contrasty as we use the brush and the radial filter for these different parts. So I'm probably going to bring those down a little bit more, probably about to minus 0 0.6, minus 0 0.7 uh, create a new brush again, and now we're going to focus on the highlights of the face here. Just kind of really accent those highlights. Nothing too drastic though, because we don't make it look like my face is glowing. Obviously, I brought it up very high at the moment, but that's mainly just so I can see where I'm brushing. 
just kind of tap a couple of times under the eyes um, and on the eyelid here as well make things quite obvious and then just bring that back a little bit so it doesn't look like my forehead's glowing probably to about plus 0 0.6 0 0.7 uh, zoom out and then we're just going to kind of assess the image from a distance so if i do the before and after now that's the before and that's the after and as you can tell with those little bits of brushing you can see if i do the before and after look at the shoulders how much that really kind of adds to the image. As I said, the brush is really quite important in making a good image. Okay guys, so that is essentially the image done. There is not really much more you can do in terms of Peter's style. What I would say is really go for the contrasty, high clarity, bright highlights, really dark shadows, uh, don't do any fade, very desaturated kind of look. Choose one part of the image or one color to really pop out and glare at you. So for this one we've chosen the eyes, but obviously don't make it too drastic that it really stands out. Um, and as I said, that is the image completely done. And as you can see, it was a very short kind of edit. We didn't really have to do much in terms of the hue, saturation, and luminance panel, which is where most of the editing for lots of people's styles come in. So this is a very kind of basic kind of color grade for you people. Okay, so if you did like that, don't forget to leave a massive thumbs up down below. And you guys can go ahead and purchase the preset pack. As you can see, we're going to have probably about five or I'm hoping about six presets um, for lots of his different styles. So if you guys are interested in that, don't forget. Um, send us a message over on Instagram and we should be able to send those across to you straight away. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Live long and prosper.